to take his mandatory eight hour rest here. He'll probably enjoy a little bit of a rest himself. And you can see Dallas off on the right. Beautiful village of White Mountain on the left. You got a team of veterinarians, race officials, trail crew, uh, comms, and other volunteers waiting down here. I'm gonna turn on my I'm gonna turn on my little light that I have so we can see what's going on. But Dallas CV, I tell you what, I I was saying earlier to Bruce that you know he's just a human being but I think I was wrong I don't think he's a human being what he's been what he's able to do in a race that's just chock full of really really talented mushers tough 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 mushers we're talking some of the toughest people around and he's out here somehow beating them year after year after year after year as I get my light situated I should have done before this all right turn on the light You can see the bell of White Mountain is being rung. And here is Dallas CV arriving to White Mountain. Live on the Iditarod Insider, guys. I agree. This is the best race coverage we've ever had in Iditarod. There's Dallas CV coming in. To White Mountain live. First place getting to White Mountain, seventy seven miles left to get to the burled arch and become the the goat the greatest of all time it's it's undisputable i don't think i don't know if this record could ever be broken he can sleep well when this is over but he's mission's not over there's still matt hall on his heels a couple hours behind Got a long way left to go, 77 miles. The Literally the most challenging run. So what does he got to do between now and then? He's got to get his team cared for, feed them, take their booties off, bed them down, get some coats on them if they don't have them on already. Massage the dogs, ointment on their feet. Feed them again, get them dessert. reinforce their straw you want to you know once they kind of get there's subtle things these mushers are doing you know when they get bedded down they're going to lick their feet they're going to kind of roll around a little bit but once they're kind of asleep then you grab some more straw you kind of reinforce their bed and give them as much insulation as they can to get them as deep of a sleep.
microphone in my hand and a light that I'm maneuvering around in the camera. I get this kind of set up for us to have a fixed look on Dallas and company. We got all these fans here from White Mountain and the surrounding area coming to watch him do these chores. All eyes on him. You think he's thinking about those people watching? No, he's thinking about this amazing team in front of him that he's got to get get them fed and bedded down as quickly as possible to, so that they can maximize this eight-hour rest. So he has a volunteer that is at the front of his team that's going to keep his lead dogs wh right where they need to be until he grabs his lead hook. Now he's grabbing his lead hook. He's giving all his dogs a good boy pet. They also have a little bit of frost that can build up on their whiskers and and uh, mouth, and so he's kind of rubbing that off a little bit. He's undoing their tug lines, and you're not going to see him waste a single trip up and down this this uh, gang line. He's undoing those tugs. He's petting his dogs, telling them how proud he is. It's super important when you have dogs completing a mission at, of this level that you know you you tell them, you thank them, you you give them gratitude. You're not you're not you're not a sergeant out there saying, "Well, we're going to do this, we're going to do that." You 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 have to work with them, communicate with them, be gentle in the way that you communicate with your dogs. Not too, not 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 too firm, right? But you don't want to, you know. He, there is a certain leadership tone that you want to have as well, and he's built that with them over years of working together and thousands of miles on the trail, and they trust him. They trust him with every that no matter where they go or what they do, that Dallas is going to have their best interest in mind. And so they're just completely like, all right, where do you want to go next? We'll do it. You want us to sleep here? Great. You want us to run a little further? Great. So now he's undone the tug lines on most of his dogs. He's now going to lay down some straw. I think he put his lead hook. There's his lead hook right there. So he's, he's got his dogs in position to be bedded down. All he has to do is lay down some straw, and they'll curl up and have a nice nap. you got some dogs that are already kind of winding down and preparing for their sleep. They're licking uh, themselves, cleaning up their feet, and, and uh, preparing themselves for bedtime, just like you guys would. You wouldn't want to go to bed in your work clothes. You got to brush your teeth, put your jam jams on. That's what these guys are doing, getting ready for bed. And Dallas is going to serve them bre breakfast or dinner in bed here, right around midnight in White Mountain. All these folks watching, cameras on him, but he's just focused on his mission. They do have to check for mandatory gear. Does he have his axe? Does he have enough booties, snowshoes, cooker? Got to sign in with the race officials. They've officially marked his time, the exact minute that he got here. They're going to enter it into the computer. So you guys at home would be able to go to the race center of the Iditarod.com website, go to the checkpoints, and click on White Mountain. And here in a few minutes, if not already, you'll be able to see the exact minute that he arrived. And then you just add eight hours to that, and that's when he can leave. So it'll be sometime between 7 and 8 o'clock. I didn't check my clock exactly. 